And Scott is our new violin player in the band, if you've noticed. Yeah. I today, so I apologize for that. Next time I'm up here, it'll sound a little bit better. So I'm just going to read what I've written. I have a tendency to ramble. Um, obviously, there's a lot of complexity and a lot of details to my life and God's story, but I want to make sure I keep it brief. You're not here to listen to me all morning. So I was blessed to grow up in a home where both of my parents knew and had a personal relationship with Jesus, and they lived out his love, grace, and mission for my brothers and me to see. They weren't perfect, but they were faithful to serving our church and community and teaching me what God's word says and what he calls us to. When I was still young, I understood that I was a sinner and that I needed God's grace to have a relationship with him, to have confidence in eternity and have a purpose and a hope for our time here on this earth. I listened and learned, but in hindsight, I didn't think for myself very often or think critically about what those in the church said or how they lived. At that time, I thought life was always black and white, easy to understand, and I thought that my parents and my church family had everything figured out. It wasn't until I was in college and part of the campus ministry there that I recognized that people could know and love Jesus genuinely while disagreeing on political, cultural, and theological issues. This season was crucial to my understanding of loving and having grace when I disagree with others, and it showed me that I had a lot to learn beyond what I had grown up believing. It was in this season that Jesus began to show me that the way God works is beyond our understanding. His thoughts are wiser than our reasoning, and his kingdom is above our political parties. In the past six years, I've experienced a lot of disappointment and frustration with Christians and churches and how they spoke about and treated the broken world around them. The past two years, my wife and I took a break from church after hurtful experiences at our previous church, and to be honest, we weren't confident that we were going to find a church that we could trust and really dive into fully. I let the church hurt turn into a God wound. And while I knew God hadn't changed, I had doubts about things I had been taught because of people that were laying that message in my life were imperfect and they held firm to ideologies that didn't glorify God or build his kingdom. Yet while we may have been forgotten or neglected by those that we were close to, Jesus was and is ever faithful. Jesus demonstrated that no matter how far we may run away, either directly or passively through our lack of action, he never runs away and he's always ready to draw us close like the father welcoming home the prodigal son. I'm thankful that my wife and I have found Lake Forest Church and believe this is where God has led us to, to love and serve him and others. One of the key moments in having peace and hope that this was the right place for us was when Pastor Moses stated the Presbyterian Creed unity in the essentials, freedom in the non-essentials, and charity above all. This is what Jesus has been teaching me in the last season, and hearing it spoken from here upon the pulpit really resonated with me and at this point of where I am in God's story for my life. I'm still learning a lot, learning how to love God and others as he calls me to, but I understand that through the grace of Jesus Christ and his death and resurrection, I've been recon reconciled to God and given eternal life. I have accepted Jesus as my Lord and Savior by faith.